Hi, I'm Amy, a teacher from Wales. This is Alex, a doctor from Ukraine. We're full-time travelers and remote workers. This week, we're stopping at various places in England and Wales. We'll start with a tour of the capital of Wales, which is Cardiff, and then we'll head to the Forest of Dean, Bream, Puzzlewood, Tintin Abbey, and Raglan Castle. Join us for this week's adventure, and if you like it, please subscribe so you don't miss next week. This roundabout. Just kidding. Welcome to Wales. I know we technically already have a Wales video from January. Maybe it was February. I don't remember. But today we're going somewhere that we haven't been in Wales. Um, and that is Cardiff. That's the capital. And even though I was born very close to Cardiff, I really haven't explored it. So we have a tour booked. But first and foremost. Not a roundabout. Take the first exit onto Mel Pass Road. That's first and foremost. A couple of things. Number one, I'm staying at my cousin's house. She is away right now, and I have done the worst thing you can do while staying at someone's house, and I've broken a kitchen drawer. So. I think there's worse things than that. <laughs> is there? Yeah. What if we were pet sitting and the pet got away or something? Okay, true. But if we're not pet sitting, it's the worst thing you can do to a house. Comment below if there's something worse you can do to a house. Miles I guess like burn it down, but let's knock on wood. So we have to do one of my favorite things, and that is go to Tesco and get super glue to fix her drawer. Also, we have to go to my friend from primary school's cafe. Okay, so those are our three things. <laughs> Number one, go to my friend's cafe. Number two, do a walking tour of Cardiff. Actually, number three, we're going to my other cousin's house for lunch, Sam. And then number four, we're gonna go to Tesco and get some super glue. Number five, we might go to Primark, my other favorite thing to do. Number six, I have to bake cookies for my grandma's house tomorrow. And work, I have to finish editing a video. There it is, look how cute. <laughs> And they serve breakfast and dogs are welcome and I'm so hungry. I don't know why I said the dogs are welcome thing. We don't have a dog, but I wish. It's sunny for the first time ever in Wales and Alex is covering his neck and ears because he's scared he'll get sunburned. I'm trying to convince him that I... The index is four. We ate at my friend's cafe. He came out to talk to us, so I didn't really record, but we drove to Cardiff, like the, the city center of Cardiff, and our tour is starting soon. I dropped Alex off, then I went to try to find parking. Parking is not easy in Cardiff. Obviously, it's a city. I should have known that. Anyway, I just parked. It's like 15 minutes away from where we need to meet, so I'm gonna walk over there now. I will show you a little bit around the city. I am currently standing right next to Cardiff Castle. I assume the tour will bring us here at some point, but it is a very well intact castle, which is rare for Wales. All right, I'm walking in circles, so I'm gonna go now. So this is the Principality Stadium. It's where Taylor played a couple months ago. It is most notably where they played rugby though. Rugby is huge in Wales. It's actually the only country in Europe where rugby is the national sport. If you're looking for a more modern brewery, our tour guide said the Tiny Rebel is a great microbrewery with lots of options. But if you want a more traditional one, the one right behind it, the City Arms, is more traditional and they serve brains, which is an ale right there. That is a traditional, more Welsh beer. Something interesting that we learned while outside the Principality Stadium is that 119 years ago, Wales played New Zealand in a rugby match. The New Zealand players started doing a haka dance as a response. Welsh team started singing the Welsh National Anthem and then the stadium started joining in with the Welsh team so the whole stadium was singing the Welsh National Anthem and that was the very first time any national anthem anywhere in the world was played before a sporting event. So next time that happens remember Wales started that when, Cardiff. in Cardiff 119 years ago. We're walking through Butte Park. Seven miles long. <laughs> yeah Alex just said. It's seven miles long 
and it has over 3,000 different species of trees. 3,000, that's so many. He's just taught us some Welsh words. Did you retain any of them, sir? No. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't retain any of them? No. I actually, no, I couldn't. Vorida. What does that one mean? Uh, good morning. Good day. Good yeah. day. Ach, heavy. That means that's gross. Gross. Diok. Thanks. Yep. Diok and var. Cheers. Nope. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this view. We're now walking along the back of the Cardiff Castle. And we just learned a little bit of history about the Butte family that lived there until 1946? 1947. Another good view of the castle. We've left the park. Oh, my hand's in the shot. We've left the park and now we're headed towards City Hall. And we're passing all of these gargoyles and some porta potties. A lot of porta potties, actually. I'm not sure what this building is, but we all get to sit down, which is nice for the tour. This is City Hall. It's a very pretty building. And this entire square is a civic center that the Buttes drew up the plans for. In the 1890s. In the 1890s and is still regarded as one of the best civic centers in Britain. I think we're gonna end the tour in front of City Hall. And he said he's gonna talk to us about the flag, which I'm very excited about because I love the Welsh flag and I love the Welsh dragon. White, and they're having a big fight to the death across Britain about 1,300 years ago. The two dragons are causing so much damage with their fighting that eventually the people get a bit annoyed and drug the dragons, which puts them to sleep and they get buried underground. This all happens in the north of Wales in the area we now call Snowdonia National Park. As the years go by, a major Welsh Lord kind of character comes along. His name is Vortigern and he wants to build a castle coincidentally on the same place where the dragons happen to be buried underneath. Every day he puts his team to work to build his castle and every morning he reawakes and he finds his castle has collapsed to the ground. This happens every day over and over and over. He starts to wonder why and he thinks the solution is to find a local boy, sacrifice the boy over the land and of course by doing that his castle can grow in the future. So he finds a local boy and his name is Merlin. This is the wizard of course from the King Arthur stories who some of us will be familiar with I'm sure. And Merlin being a wizard knows the dragons are underneath he knows they've reawoken under the surface. He knows they're fighting again, shaking the earth, making the castle fall down. So Merlin explains this to Vortigern and says, you don't need to kill me, just release the dragon, set them free, let them fight. And when they're finished, you can build whatever you want. And that's pretty much how it goes. The dragons are released and eventually the red one beats the white one, or more symbolically, of course, the Welsh one beats the English one. And that's why we have red dragons in Wales, all because of that very specific a very true story, of course, as well. <laughs> so that's why it's red rather than some other color. But maybe more logically, the dragon symbol arrives with the Romans. When the Romans leave, the local people start using dragon symbols as well. There's an evolving use of dragons up until the 1400s, different colors, shapes, sizes. Then it changes into something more like what we have up there now from 1485, when a guy named Henry Tudor becomes King Henry VII of England. He's the father of Henry VIII, of course, but more importantly for us, he's born in Wales, in a place called Pembroke Castle. And when he becomes the king, he starts trying to kind of increase his popularity in Wales by using some Welsh symbols. So he takes the legendary red dragon from the old story and puts it on his family flag, which was green and white. And this evolves into Wales' national flag ever since then, across the intervening 500 years or so but it only becomes officially recognized as the national flag of Wales that we have today in 1959, 65 years ago. And then tying in quite nicely too, actually, Cardiff only becomes officially the capital around the same time, 1955, 69 years ago. So this guy is John Marquez of Butte. He's the third. He is responsible for a lot of what Cardiff is now, uh, architecture, parks, stuff like that. So he's pretty revered here. 
We just finished the castle tour. Actually, Amy had to run and go get the car. The castle's behind me. It's beautiful. I recommend coming here. We learned there are a lot of arcades in Cardiff, and the reason there's so many is because it rains a lot, and apparently, currently at least, Cardiff is the uh, wettest city in the UK by rainfall measures. So they have a lot of arcades here, and that allows people to stay to like go out but still not get wet. And lots of shops and, and bakeries and restaurants and stands and things like that. So anyway, pretty cool. Uh, now we are gonna go grab some lunch at this point with uh, Amy's cousin, so we're excited. I'm on my way back to the car. I've left Alex, but there's a cute little cafe in the middle of these gardens. I might stop and get a quick little treat. I had to leave Alex and come back to the car because I realized I only had 10 minutes left on the parking meter and I was a 10 minute walk away. So I had to leave Alex at the tour, but I will go pick him up and we are going to head to my cousin's house next for lunch. After that, we're going to go shopping, hopefully, to Primark and Tesco. Every single time I come to Wales, I visit Primark and I will show you why later. Thank you. Looks like restaurant quality. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely Instagrammable. <laughs> All of that. We, we also the tomatoes grow out the front. Hmm. All righty, we have made it to Primark, my favorite store ever. See, look at all these black leggings. Three pound. That's all I ever wear anyway. Three pound for a tank top. Five pound for those shirts back there. Primark also always has the cutest Disney stuff. Well, I want to get this for my nephews so bad. Oh my gosh, look. <gasps> it's adorable. I must resist. Our rather spontaneous final stop is my aunt's bungalow in Land Egwith. She sadly passed away last year and the house is going on the market soon, so... I wanted to see it one last time. Horsey's coming over to say hi. Hello. Hi, sweetie. Oh, hello. Are you nice? He's like, hi, dear. <laughs> hi. Oh, what a sweetie. Oh. Oh, there's another one coming over. I don't have any food. Yeah. Yeah, you can eat some. <laughs> Of the weeds. <laughs> oh, you're so pretty. Wow. She said thank you. Did you hear that? Did you know my Auntie Leslie? Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Sweetie. Oh, thank you for pausing. Oh, she was shy at first, but she's come yeah. around. Come with me on a run in the Forest of Dean. And yes, that is the forest that Hermione took Harry to in the final Harry Potter movie. Where we're staying, sheep are allowed to roam the neighborhood. So uh, yeah, this is the beginning of my run. Some sheep hanging out. Just a random telephone box in the middle of this town. It's so pretty. There's like this abandoned sheep haven't moved so must not have run that long today we are at Gloucester Cathedral where many Harry Potter scenes were filmed and I'm excited to see if I can recognize any of them I wonder if they just take card mm -hmm. 
Oh yeah, I, I read that it was when they were running from the troll. I read that um, they didn't actually let them paint on the walls. Mm. They put like a cover down and then they painted on that, but they did actually let them flood it for the scene where Moaning Myrtle floods the girl's bathroom. Right. Yeah, the blog, the blog post told me about this because they had come here and gone to the screen. So I think that wall is back where they wrote the enemies of the air beware. They covered up these stained glass windows for filming so that it wouldn't look like a church, it would look like a school. So we read online that the cathedral allowed the film crew to actually flood the floor for the scene where Moaning Myrtle floods the bathroom after Jenny Weasley throws Tom Riddle's diary at her. And you can actually still see the water damage. I think maybe this is the water damage they were talking about. So they had written enemies of the air beware up here. This section of the cathedral reminds us a lot of Gringotts Bank. I wonder if she got inspiration from this. The outside of the cathedral is actually huge and really impressive on its own, but it's in a really cute town as well. I know some people who live in England who may not think it's anything special, but we think it's actually quite charming to walk around. Okay, this is really random footage, but I just have to show you the city of Bream where we're staying with my cousin. They just let sheep roam the streets and I find it very funny. Yeah. Did you count that one behind the fruit? Okay. What? Are you going to go to bed for me? Yeah, there's definitely seven. Are you going to go to bed for me? <laughs> wow. Oh, oh no. Ladies, hot turn. Ladies, hot We herded some chickens, now we're herding some sheep. Yep. Oh, they're like, oh, well, I guess not. I feel bad. Yeah, I feel bad too. <laughs> it just... <laughs> wow. Yeah. I'm panicking. But then they all stop right there. Yeah. This is incredible. Oh, oh, there we go. Yeah, you guys can all roll past you. Oh. <laughs> Oh, we've separated them. No, no, these ones are like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> there was one okay, bye. a couple of months ago where oh, she got okay. was, one, one was yeah. just like, <laughs> I guess a common theme in Bream is animals roaming wherever they want which I love. Apart from earlier this week at my aunt's house, I have never been this close to a horse before. 
so pretty. So today we are heading out of our home in Abergavenny, which is actually in Wales, but we're heading to Puzzlewood, which is in England, and it's a magical place where so many movies have been filmed, including Star Wars and Harry Potter. It is a very rainy and muddy day, but I think that that adds to the magic. On our final day, we headed to two really gorgeous places in Wales. One was Tintin Abbey and the other was Raglan Castle. You have to pay to go inside both of these places, so we decided to just walk the perimeter of Tintin Abbey and grab lunch at the cafe across the street. It's still really beautiful and I highly recommend. Then we headed over to Raglan Castle. To our surprise, there was some sort of World War II event going on. There were tents set up and men dressed as American soldiers with old war cars. My nephew actually got to go in one and explore. Funny because that we just drove that. That's your bed, but no. That's a great photo, isn't it? And then the other side had men dressed in the red coat uniform. They actually did a reenactment. And we stopped at a few of these tables, but then headed into the castle and up the stairs. The view from up there is incredible, and I think this is one of the best castles that I've been to. That's a wrap on our tour of England and Wales, but we'll be back next week with another kingdom in the UK.